We previously discussed permutation groups, a link in the description. In the past, when mathematicians talked about groups, they were only concerned with permutation groups. But over time, the idea of a group became more generalized, allowing for different objects and operations aside from function composition to make up a group. And it is perhaps a great surprise that that generalization didn't really allow for any new structures. In fact, Every group is isomorphic to a group of permutations. This is Cayley's theorem. So when we discussed permutation groups, we were in fact discussing a class of groups which structurally covers every possible group. Let's go through the proof of this incredible theorem. To prove the theorem, we're going to need to take an arbitrary group, construct a group of permutations, and then show there's an isomorphism between those two groups. So we're going to begin by taking an arbitrary group G, and let's take an arbitrary element from this group called A. Since all we have is this group G and this element A, it makes sense that we'll use those to construct our permutations that are going to make up the isomorphic permutation group. In particular, consider the permutation pi A from the group G to the group G defined as this. Pi A of X is the permutation which just multiplies X on the left by A. So this permutation takes every element from G and multiplies it on the left by A. And note such a permutation, Pi A, can be defined for every element of G. Now, just because we say it's a permutation doesn't mean it is. We need to prove it's a permutation by proving it's a bijection on the group G. So let's prove that. Beginning with injectivity. If pi A of x1 is equal to pi A of x2, then by definition of the permutation pi A, this means that AX1 equals AX2. Thus, by the cancellation property, since G is a group, we would have that x1 is equal to x2. This means if the images of two elements under the permutation are equal, the original elements must have been equal. Hence, distinct elements would be mapped to distinct images. So this permutation as we've defined it is injective. It's also easy to prove that it's surjective. If we take any element y from g, then the element a inverse y is also in g because g is a group, so it has inverses and it's closed with respect to products. Now, if we take that element a inverse y, and put it in the permutation pi a, pi a is going to multiply it on the left by a. That, of course, will cancel out with the a inverse, and thus will just be left with y. Hence, any element y of g gets mapped to, under this permutation, by the element a inverse y. Put that in the permutation, you're going to get y out. So indeed, pi a is a permutation on G. A is an arbitrary element of G, so for every element A of G, we have this permutation pi A. Thus, the set we may call G star, consisting of all those permutations pi A, where A ranges over the elements of G, this is a set of permutations of G, but it's not necessarily the case that it is all permutations of G, or even that it is a group. To show that it's a group of permutations, we'll show that it's a subgroup of the symmetric group on G. Remember, the symmetric group on G, denoted SG, is the group of all permutations on G. Certainly, this is a set of permutations on G. Let's show that it's a subgroup of SG. We'll begin by establishing closure. If we take two permutations, pi A and pi B, from the set G star, if we compose them and evaluate them at the element X, by definition of function composition, that's pi A of pi B of X. But then by definition of the permutation, that's pi A of b x, but then that's a times b times x. But again, by definition of the permutation, a times b times x would be the image of x under the permutation pi a b. So we compose these two permutations, pi a and pi b, and we see that they behave in the same way that the single permutation pi a b would. Pi a b we know is a permutation of g star because a b is an element of g. 
because A and B are elements of G, so their product is as well. So this establishes closure. The composition of any two permutations from G star is itself a permutation from G star. To show that G star is closed with respect to inverses, note that the identity of G star is the identity permutation pi E. This would just multiply each element of G on the left by the identity, hence not changing them. We know from our previous work on closure that the composition of two elements pi a with pi a inverse is pi a a inverse, but a times a inverse is e. Thus, pi a composed with pi a inverse is the identity element pi e. We've previously shown that if composing two elements produces the identity, those two elements must be inverses. So what's the inverse of a permutation pi a from the set g star? Well, it would be the permutation pi a inverse, which is itself in G star. We know that because A is in G and G is a group, so A inverse is also in G, thus pi A and pi A inverse are in G star. And as we see here, the inverse of pi A is pi A inverse. So G star is closed and it also contains inverses. This means that G star is in fact a subgroup of the symmetric group on G and hence it is a group of permutations. Thus, all that remains for us to establish the theorem is that our group is isomorphic to this group of permutations, namely that G is isomorphic to G star. To show that G is isomorphic to G star, we need to show there's an isomorphism between the groups, and to that end, we will consider the function f from g to g star defined like this. f maps each element a to its corresponding permutation, pi a. We'll begin by showing f is injective. If f of a is equal to f of b, then by definition of the function, pi a is equal to pi b. This means that, for example, pi a of e must equal pi b of e because the images of any element under these two permutations must be the same, since the permutations are equal. So just in particular, pi a of e would equal pi b of e. This is useful because e is the identity. So by definition of these permutations, that would mean that a times e is equal to b times e. But then since e is the identity, that just means a equals b. So if the images of two elements a and b are equal under this function f, those elements had to be equal, so it would map distinct elements to distinct images. F is indeed an injective function. It's very easy to see that F is surjective because each element pi A from G star is the image of the element A from G. That is, F of A is equal to pi A. So this is really easy just because the elements of G star are completely constructed from the elements of G. So indeed, F is a surjection. And then to show that F preserves the group operation, note that F of the product AB by definition of F would be pi AB. But we know that pi AB is the same as the composition pi A with pi B but pi a composed with pi b is f of a composed with f of b. Because, of course, pi a is f of a, and pi b is f of b, just by definition of the function. So we could compose two elements before sending them through the function f, or we could compose them in g star after sending them through f separately. We'll get the same result. Since f is a bijection from g to g star, which preserves the group operation, we have that f is an isomorphism from g to g star, and so by definition, g is isomorphic to g star. And g was an arbitrary group. Hence, we've proven Cayley's theorem, showing that every group is isomorphic to a group of permutations. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this result or its proof, and be sure to check out my Abstract Algebra course and Abstract Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching.